istihadah, which is irregular bleeding, which is other than the normal menstruation or postnatal bleeding, and other kinds of bleeding do not invalidate the fast. So if there is blood coming out of your nose, you cut your hand, you fell and you got hurt, and as a result you're bleeding, this bleeding does not invalidate the fast. Likewise, istihadah, irregular bleeding that a woman has, that also does not invalidate the fast. A woman will fast, she will keep her fast, she doesn't need to break it. The only thing that does break the fast, the only kind of bleeding is which one? Menstruation and postnatal bleeding. Okay, They break the fast irrespective of the time of the day it starts. So, if you start your period even 15 minutes before iftar time, your fast is gone. Well, how do you know it happened exactly at that time? Okay, you don't know. Either you checked before Maghrib or you checked after Maghrib. Okay, so if you checked before Maghrib, that means your fast is gone. If you checked after Maghrib, then just believe that it happened afterwards. Okay, so if it happened during the fast, before you broke your fast, okay, then in that case, the fast is lost. You have to make that whole fast up again, not half a fast. Okay, but the entire fast, because that's what some people believe, that if it's after noon, then your fast is saved. If it's before noon, then your fast is lost. No, you start your bleeding, you begin your period, any time during the day, your fast is gone. Then fasting is not invalidated by a wet dream, meaning ihtilam, or mere emission of madi. Compensatory fasts in lieu of obligatory fasts missed in Ramadan can be kept any time of the year. So if you have to make up some of your fasts, let's say you miss them because of your hayd, because of your sickness, then you can make them up any time after the month of Ramadan, but they have to be done before the next Ramadan. One more issue, which is that if a woman has her hayd, okay, and her bleeding has stopped, let's say she wakes up at suhoor time and she is clean. Now, if she goes and takes a bath, she'll miss the time to eat. And if she goes and eats, she won't be able to take a bath before Fajr begins. So in this case, what should she do? She will go eat her suhoor and she can take a bath even after Fajr has begun. This applies to a menstruating, a woman who has become clean from her hayd and also a person who has woken up in the state of Janaba. Okay? A person who is in the state of Janaba, meaning they have to take a bath. But again, either take a bath or eat. So they eat and they take a bath after. But when they're taking a bath, they will make sure that when they sniff water up their nose, they don't take it too deeply so that it doesn't go into their throat. Okay. Now when it comes to bleeding, like was mentioned, nosebleed, it doesn't break the fast. Likewise, an injury, it doesn't break the fast. So basically, involuntary bleeding, bleeding that you don't have any control over, Okay. besides hayd, okay, that does not invalidate the fast. And if a person feels a lot of weakness. Let's say, may Allah protect us, but if a person ends up in a car accident and they are bleeding profusely, so much so that they have become weak, they're fainting, they're unconscious. So in that case, can they break their fast? Yes, they should. Okay, they should. There's no harm if they break their fast. And when it comes to deliberate voluntary bleeding, like for example, donating blood and the like, then the scholars have said that this is something that is not allowed. This is something that a person should not do while he or she is fasting. For example, if a person has to get a blood test done, okay, or they have to inject some kind of medication or check their blood sugar level, and as a result, a little bit of blood is excreted out of the body, then in that case, that does not invalidate the fast because even though it is intentional, amount, the quantity is very little. Okay, so because of this reason, it is okay. Now, how about bleeding in the mouth? Does that break the fast? If a person swallows it deliberately, then in that case, it does break the fast. However, if he swallows it involuntarily, okay, not deliberately at all, like for example, a person feels that there's a weird taste in their mouth and it's reached their throat as well and they can't figure out why it's happening, they go to the washroom to rinse their mouth and they see blood coming out of their mouth. So they didn't know it was blood, they didn't know that their mouth was bleeding and if they swallowed a little bit unconsciously, without any intention, then there is no harm. Okay? So the bleeding itself doesn't break the fast but intentional swallowing 
deliberate swallowing will. One more thing. If a person is getting some dental treatment done, and as a result there is a lot of bleeding, again, what's the principle? That don't swallow. Okay? Don't swallow it. You have to spit everything out. And if it's inevitable that you will swallow it because it's too much, then if you know that's how the procedure is, then you should delay until the fast is over, until Ramadan is over, okay, and not have it done while you are fasting. And if it's not possible to avoid it, let's say if a person is in a lot of pain, it's a serious dental treatment, then in that case, they don't fast, okay, if it's making it difficult for them to keep their fast, okay.